again, I don't want to put people's dreams down, but I do want to make sure that people can really self assess where they're at and make the best decision for themselves. What's up fam? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Phil Sarpon. This is Phil's Guide to Side D. If it's your first time here, welcome. This channel is dedicated to all things psychology, wellness, and graduate school. Today, I'm going to be answering the question of students that have low GPAs that are wondering what they should do, especially if they are thinking about trying to apply into Side D schools. Now, this is a really good question. It's, it's a, a very delicate topic because Honestly, every student has their own different unique situation. So it's going to be really difficult for me to just give this umbrella type of advice because it might not fit your specific type of situation. But I think one thing that I would want to ask you guys is if you do have a low GPA to kind of do a little bit of a self assessment to figure out perhaps why you have a low GPA, there might actually be some pretty legitimate reasons that you have a low GPA, whether you went through a lot of different trials and tribulations throughout your college career, uh, perhaps you just didn't really put a lot of time and effort in the beginning of college and then towards the end you kind of like woke up a little bit and then you started to do well. Or maybe you didn't like the college that you were at or you didn't like the major that you were in and so you switched majors and so a lot of your low GPA from the major that you switched from has really pulled down your GPA. I mean, there could be endless reasons why you have a low GPA, but I think one of the things that you do want to be sort of self aware of is exactly why you have a low GPA. And once you've figured out the why, I think then you can kind of figure out all the different pathways in terms of what to do next. All right, so once you have figured out why exactly you think that you have a low GPA for whatever reason it is, I think then you can start a game plan in terms of what you can do with that piece of information. For example, do you feel like you need to retake some courses to try and boost up your GPA again? Do you feel like you need to transfer into a different school, perhaps a community college and take some easier courses? Do you feel like you need to change your major? Do you feel like whatever you can do right now in undergrad is going to be sufficient enough for grad school? As I've mentioned earlier in past videos is that for graduate programs, they're usually going to have a cutoff of 3.0. So as long as you are at least above a 3.0, you still do have a decent shot of getting into some PsyD programs if you have other areas of your application that are really, really good. For example, research experience or clinical experience. Maybe you have really great letters of recommendation. So overall, you have the experience and maybe you, you do really well on your GRE. I think if you can make a case, even in your personal statement, about whatever situation that you went through that caused your low GPA, I think admission schools will definitely take a look at that, especially if they're trying to look at each applicant from a holistic point of view. So for example, if you had a couple bad semesters because something happened in your life, that is something that you can talk about in your personal statement and give to the committee as a reason why you have a low GPA in some semesters. And so I think taking it from a holistic point of view, I think if you can make a case for yourself, whether it's doing well on your GRE or getting really good clinical and research experience or really getting good letters of recommendation, I think you definitely still have a good shot of going into a PsyD program. Now, if those things don't work out, some of the things that students will do is that they will eventually go into a master's program. What a master's program could do for people is that it could help you boost your GPA. It could also help you get some research experience. It could help you get some really good letters of recommendation. It could also help you just mature and get used to what it's like being a graduate student. Also getting the masters could help you get into clinical psychology programs. You might be a third of students that are actually going into PsyD schools with a masters. The other thing too is that if you have a masters in psychology, some of the courses that you take in your masters program 
could also be fulfilled in terms of your graduate program. So a number of students, even in my cohort, have had classes that have been audited. They have cl classes where they didn't actually have to take it. And so they've had semesters where maybe they only had like 11 credit hours and the rest of us had 14 or 15 credit hours. But because they took that particular class in their master's program, they didn't have to take it into their site e program. So that could also be of benefit as well. Now, obviously master's programs are still gonna be expensive. They're still also gonna require some time. So it's definitely good to make sure that it really will be the best decision for you. But those are sort of some of the main options if you have a low GPA. Another thing that you can do is that you can try and talk to an advisor, maybe someone that's actually even in graduate school or in, in a PsyD program, just to see where what their personal opinion is. A lot of times when people can talk to people that actually know them, so for example, if there's someone that actually knows you and that says, hey, I think you might actually be really good for this or I think you should keep going, that is gonna be additional affirmation that, okay, like you're, on, you're still on the right track. And so having a group of people, a support system that can kind of help you guide and, and navigate this, this situation, I think is also going to be helpful. I've definitely in my life have seen a number of people that had low GPAs in college and do well in master's programs or do well in additional courses and apply or get additional research or clinical experience. In fact, honestly, for me, I didn't even have that great of a GPA. I was definitely taking a pretty hard major. And so I was kind of able to interweave that a little bit into my personal statement, but I was taking some super hard classes that kind of brought my GPA down. And so for me on the upside, I did really well on my psychology courses. So if you're someone that, for example, let's say you were a major in engineering or something like that, and it was super stressful, it was super difficult, and then you switched to psychology, well, here's the thing, even if you did bad on some of those engineering classes, if you were able to do really well on your psychology courses, at the end of the day, that's what matters most. Yes, the committee and the admissions board is gonna be looking at your whole GPA and all the classes you've taken, but if they are seeing that you have an A in intro to psych or an A in this psychology course or an A in this psychology course, that is, that's a positive. And so I do want to uplift people and, and give people some hope that yes, Maybe your GPA isn't where it needs to be, but especially if you took some really hard courses and it brought down your GPA, but you did really well on the psychology courses, that is also something that you can interweave into your personal statement, especially when you go into your interviews with these schools. Just talk about that. Talk about why your major was not the major for you, but you actually did really good on some of these psychology courses. And even though it wasn't enough to bring your whole GPA up, you still did well, right? And so I've talked about other things that you can do in your application to also help buffer you in that application system, whether it's your GRE, your experience, or your letters of recommendation. But all of those things are gonna be holistically looked at by most of the schools that you apply to, all right? So do that self-assessment, get a game plan, get a support system, and figure out what you need to do. Again, I don't wanna put people's dreams down, but I do wanna make sure that people can really self-assess where they're at and make the best decision for themselves, okay? So with that, if you guys have any other questions about the GPA and stuff like that, definitely put it down in the comment section below. If you have not already, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell to get notifications anytime I put out a video. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.